We're going to discuss the issue of diversity, God, shock horror, and the idea that diversity is strength. Stand by. Cue theme music. All right, um, let's see. Uh, diversity is strength. Well, first of all, uh, it isn't. Uh, let's just get that uh, up front. Um, uh, monocultures have always been way more successful than multicultural societies. Um, and you've only just really got to take a look at the world around you to see that that, that is true. I mean, a classic um, uh, successful monoculture at the moment is Japan. Um, this was a country that suffered the devastation of, of losing um, World War II and um, suffered a uh, uh, two nuclear bomb attacks, two nuclear bomb attacks, and then achieved a tremendous recovery um, post-World War II to have one of the most booming economies in the world. And uh, one of the tenets, even though um, Japan did embrace some aspects of Western civilization, one of the elements of uh, Western civilization that it did not um, embrace was the idea of multiculturalism. Well, there is a small, what you call expat community in Japan. Um, there's a small community of, um, foreign uh, workers, Western workers and stuff, but it would make up no more than one to like three to five percent at the absolute most, more like one or two percent. Um, the rest of the country is purely Japanese and it's a very unique country and it's a, it's a very beautiful country um, for protecting this culture. And the very fact that it protects its own culture is itself the exact opposite of racism. If you were to flood Japan with, I don't know, many other different peoples from other various um, um, uh, countries from around the world, uh, uh, particularly Asian countries, say in the region from, I don't know, China and Korea and, I don't know, Singapore and Taiwan, it, it would just not be Japan, Japan anymore, you know what I mean? One of the great things about Japan is that it is Japanese. So uh, this is what's, can this is, and this is the hilarious, um, what you call counterintuitive result of the argument that diversity um, is our strength, which I argue that it is not. I, not only do I argue that diversity is not our strength, I argue that, um, that a multicultural society and that this embrace of this radical diversity is actually racist, um, which is actually what um, uh, people accuse uh, uh, people who are anti-immigration or are interested in uh, an, a strong nationalist society that's holistic. Um, they accuse us of being racist. I, I completely throw that argument back on them. No, no, no. It is, it is very much the people flooding our countries with mass immigration that are the racists because it is not good for the people who are coming here and it's not good for the local culture. Um, and you're essentially destroying both cultures and you're creating a kind of nowhere place, a kind of um, something that T.S. Eliot would call a wasteland. You know what I mean? You know, this kind of this kind of grey mush area. And you've seen some, you know, both Melbourne and Sydney have become this. You, when you go into the CBD in Melbourne and Sydney, you have no idea what country you're in. You could be in, I don't know, some maybe vaguely um, affluent part of the Middle East, or you could be in some vaguely affluent part of Asia. Um, these cities now really don't have um, much um, uh, cohesion apropos them being Australian. And I think this is a great tragedy. And I think when people come to Australia, tourists who come to Australia, they would like to see, I don't know, maybe a few Australians. It's actually <laughs> unheard of as it might be. But, you know, so I think the idea that diversity is strength is a nonsense. First of all, the, the actual phrase, diversity is strength, um, that is actually just a reworking of the phrase ignorance is strength, which is very telling, from 1984 by George Orwell. And um, George Orwell was not uh, a guidebook about how we're meant to live the future. It was a dire warning. George Orwell had a privy to essentially what is called the globalist plan for world domination and the new world order. Um, post, um, around the time of World War II, he was part of... Um, British intelligence, and he was he was privy to the the, the grand plan for what uh, the globalists wished to do to Western civilization, and this is why what he is predicting is so on the money because this was their plan, and he just you know it was like a very very top secret document than what they wished to turn um, Western civilization into, which is essentially or the world into, which is two sides. They're meant to, in the, in the idea of the world of 1984, there are two sides that are permanently at war and that these two sides are essentially entirely a slave class. Everybody is a slave, and, and, and they're just ruled over by this kind of ruthless evil elite, you know, under the name of Big Brother or this kind, you know, and the Ministry of Truth and the various ministries who oppress everybody on both sides. 
and that you know there's things like the one minute of hate or whatever and you know and uh, recently um, there's the, the whole idea there's even the notion of face crime that you could look a certain way uh, and that could be a crime in 1984. And then, of course, recently we had that that fellow with the uh, with the red uh, marga cap, who just basically sat silently while an Indian banged a drum in his face for like about I don't know two minutes, and he did not say anything. He did not do anything. And this was apparently a huge controversy. People were threatening to kill him and his family and bomb the school. There were like liberals who wanted to like you know. So oh, if there's going to be a school shooting, go shoot up that school. I'll be okay with that. I mean, this is the kind of moral and ethics of these people. It's unbelievable. So anyway, back to the point. You know. Um, Diversity is our strength. It's a fiction. It's it's a 1984 Newspeak slogan that we're being fed, and it's absolute nonsense. And you know we need to see that. And you've also got to realise too, like what countries are being fed this? You know what I mean? It's only Western countries. Like if you go to Japan, or if you even go to Singapore, or you go to many other China, there's no message that diversity is their strength. There's no message in Russia. There's no message of diversity in in Africa. You go to Uganda, this, which I have been. I spent six weeks in Uganda. I had a really wonderful time there. And believe me, they've got enough ethnic tension with the tribes in their own country to argue that they need to bring more in because they've already got two or three major kind of tribal wars, at least between the North and South in Uganda. So the last thing they want is further immigration from other countries. And if they were, those two factions who are fighting would join together and fight the, the people who are coming in. So trust me, there are... Uh, ethnic and tribal divisions the world over and the idea that we all need to come together into some kind of mishmash kind of like um, is just a, a globalist lie that's not meant to assist us First of all, it's meant to replace us, which many on the uh, new right and the alt right have, have spoken about. It, we're meant to be replaced. But it's also about weakening us to essentially soften us up for whatever plans they have, whether it be a 1984 type future or some kind of invasion from a, a, um, another major state like China in the um, foreseeable future of, say, the next 20, 30, 40 years. So I think that is really what's going on with this whole kind of, you know, and, and it is fed out of our media, you know, like, Diversity is our strength. It's just, it's just, and, and it's disproved by the nightly news every single night of the week. There was some station and these young teenage boys had been there and they'd been beaten up and robbed a couple of times by Sudanese gangs. And of course they'd gone to the police and the police were like, yeah, whatever, okay, yes, there's, there's no Sudanese gang problem. Are you kidding? By the way, could you pass me that donut? Thank you. Thank you very much. So anyway, that was the kind of situation there. And uh, I mean, you know, it, they don't even consider the problem to be real. I think they, the, the Victorian police have come out and admitted that finally after, I don't know how many years, people have been saying there's a problem for about three or four years now that there's been a problem. But finally, I think they have admitted it, but they're still not admitting it on a grassroots level. Uh, and so I think some of these kids just took a baseball bat down there. A couple of them took a baseball bat to defend themselves. And then I think there was a bit of a scuffle next time they were going to be robbed. And I really... You really can't blame citizens. Um, and I saw a lot of comments like that all over Facebook from people on the left and right who felt that if these, you know, if these, ga if the police aren't going to enforce the law and that young people are being robbed left, right and centre by these Sudanese gangs, how can they stop them fighting back? You know what I mean? So I guess that's my thought on it. And I think it's a, it's a terrible disaster. And this is only the beginning of, of, of what could happen if we continue down this um, you know, kind of disastrous course of endless multiculturalism, particularly multiculturalism from countries that are essentially war zones. I mean, countries like Sudan, Somalia. I mean, you know, when I visited Uganda, um, we were told not to go too close to the border of Sudan, which is up the north, because basically you'll get killed, I mean, by just about anybody, you know, up near there. And it was the same with Somalia. Somalia at the time was so dangerous, we, you could not go there without a United Nations, like, like tank escort. You know what I mean? That's how dangerous it was. And we're importing people from these countries where, where murder and rape and every horrible, vicious crime on earth is like, God, that's Tuesday morning. You know what I mean? God knows what happens Wednesday afternoon because you don't want to know. And people from these countries are just coming left, right and centre and, oh, God forbid, they don't fit in. I mean, what, this is a very important thing. People have grown up in a country that's a war zone. They've been brutalised, OK? They've been brutalised by that war. And how are they going to be? They're going to be brutal. It's the same with people from the Middle East, people from countries like Syria and towns like Aleppo or, um, and other different uh, war zones, Iraq, Afghanistan. If you have been brutalised, there was only one truth you're going to know, and that is brutality. And do we really want to bring people here who, whose only truth is brutality? And suddenly us, we see all these horrible crimes and horrible things happening. It's just not correct. And um, I think anybody with common sense on the left and right now 
has to begin to limit um, immigrations from these uh, from these war torn countries. But I do agree that we need to stop bombing these countries. You know, I mean, we need to stop ending these pointless um, globalist wars. And at the moment, it looks like you know, Venezuela is the latest one. You know, surprise, surprise, Venezuela uh, is the latest one of which America is interested to bring freedom. It also happens to have the world's biggest oil field, which is, of course, a complete coincidence, of course. I mean, you know, the oil fields have nothing to do with this. As we all know, it's all about freedom. And as you see in countries like Libya and Syria, all the freedom that is there now, all those wonderful freedom in those bomb towns in Syria, and all that freedom in Libya, actually, what's happened in Libya is slavery has returned. Open their open... Um, um, slave like slave markets in um, in Libya now, after Gaddafi has fallen, where you can go and buy um, a, an African person for I don't know what the going price is, but uh, open slave markets have began again in Libya. So that's uh, Obama's war that one, and so well done Obama for bringing back slavery. You've uh, really contributed to uh, Western civilization there, pal.